Hello there, this is Pastor David Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you again to the program Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. So glad to be connected up with you again. I pray God has been blessing you. We're here in the month of April and time is moving on. Seasons are changing, but we continue to go forward. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about a little bit here in a moment. We've been talking about uh, over the past couple of actually in and out of this series of pressing on and pressing forward. And I want to talk to you a little bit more about what it takes to move forward as we get ready to go into our next level of what God has in store for us. But let me just first invite you to the church. You're invited to come here. Destiny Preparation Church is located at 1405 Lyle Avenue in Rochester, northwest side of the city, Lyle, in between Mount Reed and 390. We're very close to Mount Reed, only a couple of short blocks away from that. There's a McDonald's right across the street from where we are. Find those golden arches and you will find us right across the street. We'd be so happy to have you with us in any of our services. And I do want to also emphasize to you that you can connect up with us if you're watching right now through our YouTube channel or Facebook uh, page. If you're not, those things are available. We do air our program as well on television in the greater Rochester area on Spectrum Cable. It's on channel 1301, 1301, and it takes place on Saturdays and Sundays in the Rochester area, both on RCTV in the greater Rochester area and in the suburbs. So join us for any of these programs. Stay connected to us through Facebook. I encourage you to like uh, our page. If you have not, Destiny Prep Church on Facebook and share uh, these posts as they come out. You know, the, there may be something that's going to bless somebody that, that you know that needs it. So if this really blesses you, I encourage you to share it with your friends, with your, let your voice uh, be a part of this ministry as well. Now, let me take you to the word of God. This is a sermon called Letting Go. It's part of the continuing process we've been sharing from Philippians chapter three about pressing on to where God would have us to be and have us to go. And one aspect of that is the aspect of letting go. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. Once you understand that it's time for you to move forward, realize that there are times where there are things behind you that need to be and stay behind you. Everything that's with you cannot go where you're going. Abraham had to leave a lot behind. There are some experiences you had, some burdens that you've been carrying, some things that you've been through that may need to stay in the behind scene, in the rear view mirror, in order for you to go forward. So I pray this blesses you. I pray you'll listen to it, share it with somebody, and come and join us here at Destiny Preparation Church. God bless you. Hope to see you real soon. Last week we said, speak to me, God. I want to hear you. That means I'm determined to go further than where I've been. How many of you are determined to go further in God than where you've been? Amen. Amen. I, I, now, that word was determined. How many of you are determined to do it? Amen. Some of the people just want to do it. Maybe if it happens, perhaps I'll think about it. I'll consider it. We'll see what happens. How many of you are determined to get closer to God? Amen. That's the mindset that we need to have. That's the mindset that will press, the mindset that's determined to go further. He says, this, this, but first, this one thing I need to do. It starts with, I need to forget those things which are behind. The first thing I've got to do before I can really get to where God wants me to be, before I can really achieve, before I can really make it up the mountain, there are some things that in my past that I first got to let go of. Forgetting those things which are behind. Part of the process of moving forward is to first let go of the past. I'll say that again. Amen. That's quotable. Y'all can quote that one. Amen. Part of the process of moving forward is to first let go of the past. You can't truly go forward as long as you're hanging on to certain things from your past. You got to let go. Tell somebody you got to let it go. Amen. In the, in the previous verses of this chapter, we read in the, already where Paul speaks of his awareness of his past. He knows his past. He's familiar with it. And he has different aspects, different feelings about his past. To one extent, uh, they are a lot of good things that he did, a lot of good things that he achieved. There are a lot of things that took him from one level to the next to the left. At the same time, there are some things in his past that he doesn't necessarily really consider anymore to be what he thought they were. There are some things that you go through in life where you think, man, if I can just do this, achieve this, I will have made it. 
But after a while, you look back at that same thing and you realize, well, you know, that really wasn't all as much as I thought it was. That didn't change me the way I thought it would. That didn't impress me the way I thought it was good for a moment. You know, sometimes when you get that new car, you know, you get that car you've been dreaming about and hoping for and you finally get it. And yes, it's good for a little bit until you have to start paying the bill on it or until it starts, you know, sooner or later it starts breaking down. Right. And, you know, one thing about cars, 100 percent, all of them, none of them last forever. You have to put work into it. You got to put money into it. That thing that was golden and pure and purred and ran like, you know, whatever. Sooner or later, it starts coughing and dragging and falling apart and limping. And the thing that you thought was so great and good, all of a sudden you realize is really just a car. Are you all with me? Amen. Amen. Paul speaks of his he, he's aware of his past. Uh, but, you know, your past can be uh, filled with both successes and failures. It, it, you can, your past can be things that went well. Uh, they can be things that uh, were achievements, things that you consider to be good and successful. But they can also be things that uh, were failures, where there were problems. There are things in your past that you wish you hadn't done. Things in your past that, that didn't go the way that you expected them to go. There are all kinds of things that are built into you from your past. And, and I want you to realize today that it's not just the failures of your past that can hold you back. It's not just the things that didn't go right uh, that, that, that will hinder you or that cause you uh, to limp, if you will, or to be held back. Some of your failures, some of your successes can hold you back, too. Many times you feel that you achieved so much and that achievement was so great that you can never let go of that achievement. Uh, you, you begin to measure everything else based on that specific thing that happened. You compare things and, and many times you're hesitant of other things because they don't measure up or measure up the same way to the things that you experienced in your past. So there are times that your successes can be challenges to you and there are times your failures can be challenges to you. At the same time, both successes and failures can be supportive of where you're going. You can learn from your failures. You can, uh, can move forward because I realize that that's not the way to do it anymore. Or I've learned from that. Now what I need to do after trying the things that did not work. Both of them can work for you or against you. I want, to, want you to consider three things that can happen from your past. You can come up with three different things. Your, your, your past can become either tools, they can become scars, or they can become idols. I'll say that again. Your past, the things from your past, your memories, your experiences, things you've gone through can become tools, they can become scars, or they can become idols. They can become tools because they can help you to build confidence in what you're doing. In other words, what you've been through can show you, yes, I can do this. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to achieve it, but because of what I've done in the past, now I've built some confidence. It was a success. And so I'll try it again. I can even take it to another level. They can become tools in establishing your abilities. In other words, what you learned yesterday can be things that you'll utilize in, in tomorrow. Your experiences of the past build tools of put tools into your, your capabilities that come together to make a package. I learned this over here, and I learned this from that experience. I learned patience from this. I learned some skills at this job, and I took on some others from doing this, and now I have a, a tool package because of all the experiences that have happened in my life. They can also become tools because of the fact uh, that, that, they, that you learn even through your failures. And so my failure was a tool to me because it helped me learn what not to do. It taught me what was wrong. I was trying to fix that and I went about it the wrong way. But now I know the right way to do it. I was trying to move ahead in doing something in my home or in my life or even uh, on, on, and on the Internet. I was trying to build something, create something, send a message. And the way I sent the message didn't quite come through right. So I'm learning now how to do that differently. And so these things can be, your past can be tools in your life. Your past can also create scars in your life. 
And scars, again, can work for you or they can work against you. Scars in your life, things that were brutal, things that were painful, things that you experienced that hurt you or perhaps uh, c c caused some kind of a gash in you, either emotionally or spiritually or mentally or physically. Your scars teach you what to avoid. Amen. You, you went to reach for that, that flame the first time as a child on top of the stove, and you realized that putting your finger in there was a bad idea. Amen. You may have gotten a burn. You may have gotten a scar from that, but it taught you something. Your scar taught you to avoid that kind of situation. You don't want to get in that again. Your scars can teach you there are some things that you need to let go of. It can teach you that, you know, some relationships don't work out right, amen, from the beginning. And so your scars from that are teaching you how to not do that again. On the other hand, your scars, uh, your situation that caused scars can make you bitter. They can put you in a place where you will no longer put yourself out like that because I've been hurt before. I'm not going to expose myself. I'm not going to help anybody like that ever again. Why? Because I have scars from the last time I tried to do it. You've got to be careful. Your scars can hold you back. They can make you bitter in your situation or your scars can make you stronger. They say of things in your body where you are scarred, where you have different things that happen to you, where there are scars, where there are repairs in your body, the areas that are repaired are oftentimes stronger than they were even before they were damaged. Legs and or bones that were broken, when they repair, they fuse together in such a way so that they're stronger in that position than they were before they were broken so that that break can never happen again. Scars over your skin, they're thicker than the, the, the normal skin there because the body is trying to, uh, trying to ensure that you have enough strength so that if that same attack comes back against you, come on, you need to hear this, if that same attack comes back in the same way, it will not have the same effect on you again. You are to learn and build from your scars so that you are stronger after the fact than you were before it started. So your scars can work again for you or against you. Amen. You can create idols from things of your past. Amen. Idols in that there are things that you will lock into. Amen. Because of what used to be. Amen. I remember the job that I used to have and I'm so fond of what I used to do. And so it becomes an idol for you because it's all you can imagine when you think about what you're going to do. It can lock you in so that you're not willing to try anything else because you have been bound into that thing that was so good for you. I remember that situation that I had, that relationship that I had, and all your old your relationships can become idols where you become locked in and compare everything against that, and nothing else will ever compensate or do because of what that thing meant in your life. You have to be careful, amen, both good and bad things can become idols and hindrances to you moving forward. I want you to see that there are things from your past that can work for you or against you. And because of them, you can become either stronger or weaker, amen, than you were in the past. You've got to learn how to put the things from your past in the right perspective so that they don't cause you to be hindered from where you're trying to go tomorrow. Understand this, that what you experience in your past does not dictate your future. Things that you went through, good and bad, high and low, do not dictate your future. You can allow it to help to prepare you, amen, to move forward, but you don't want to get stuck in your past. Many times, amen, we are drawn, we are compelled by the way things used to be, the good old days, the things that used to happen, and by inherently we're longing to go backwards. I want you to understand that your victory, your joy, your success, your best place is never behind you. Are you with me today? Amen. Your best place is never behind you. Your best place is yet to come. And so the things that happened to you in the past, they may have hurt you or they may have lifted you up, but they were only a preference, preface for where you are heading and where you are going. Tell somebody, don't get stuck in your past. Don't get stuck in your past. So before going forward, come on. 
Paul deals with letting go of the past. He says before, I don't comprehend myself to have apprehended. I want to go for more. I want to go higher. I want to get into something better. I want to get into something more. But first, there's one thing that I've got to do. For some of us, you need to remind yourself, there's one thing I've got to do. Yes, I want to go forward. Yes, I want to go higher. Yes, I want to reach something greater. But first, there's one thing that I need to do. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. And understand, forgetting does not necessarily mean ignoring. Forgetting it doesn't mean just wiping the memory of it out of your mind. For many times we think we're moving forward, amen, just by ignoring some of the things of our past. You have unfinished business in your past and now you're just ignoring it. You're trying to pretend like it didn't happen. You're trying to pretend like it didn't have the impact on you that it did. You're trying to uh, pretend like it, it doesn't hold, hang on to you, like it's hanging on to you. You cannot move forward as long as you are being compelled and driven and and pulled by the past. You cannot go where you need to go as long as you're still carrying the fear of your past. Come on, somebody. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24, it gives a story there that Jesus shares, amen, of a man, amen, that's about to, about to move forward, about to go to God. He says, so if you are presenting, this is Matthew 5 and 23 in the New Living Translation, he says, so if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple, and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you. And listen, I'm not just talking about having, it's not just a matter of somebody having something against you. Whatever is still lingering from your past. As you get ready to go to God, he says you're entering in the temple, ready to give your sacrifice to God. I'm ready to go present myself to God. I'm ready to move into the presence of God. I'm ready for God to take me higher. But you remember that there are some things that are still lingering in your past. Come on, somebody. He says, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. I heard somebody say, amen, not too long ago. He said, don't take the, the sacrifice back. He says, leave it there. If you take it back, it's likely that you're not going to bring it back again. But leave it there at the altar. Go and be reconciled. Somebody say, go be reconciled. Go be reconciled. There are some things in your past that still need to be reconciled. They need to be put in the right perspective. They need to be put in the right place in your life. Amen. They can be, again, things that are good or things that were bad, but they are holding on to you and not allowing you to go where you need to go. Sometimes we have memories of the past. Oh, I remember, amen, it was so good back then. If I can only get back then, get back to where I was, and it's hindering you from going forward because all you can focus on is going back to where you were I'm going to tell you again your future is never in your past the past is only the setup it's only to the foundation upon which you build to go where you need to go but don't get yourself locked up in the hope of going backwards and going back to where you were and to the situation you were in your answer is never in your past tell somebody move forward he said, first, I got to deal with the past, so I got to deal with these things. I've got some things, amen, there's some things, amen, that I got to put in the right perspective. Paul, when he speaks of his previous life, he says, you know, there were some good things there. And I was brought up right. I was, I was the, in the right religion. I was, a, I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. I was studied. I was this, I was that. He had fond memories of his past. Amen. But he said, I had to let all of that go in order to be what God would have me to be. There are some things. And yes, he still benefits from his past. He still benefits from he, what he knows of the law. He still benefits and preaches to those who understand the law from the law. It doesn't mean that it's not going to help you, but you still cannot allow it to hinder you from going where God would have you to go. Listen, some of us are afraid to go forward. Hmm. Some of us are afraid to go forward. We're still clinging and holding on to what's behind us, and it's caused us to truly be afraid. We may think about, about going forward. We may even dream about it. We may even imagine it, imagine it, but you're not going. Why are you not going? Because you're still holding on to the past, the good and the bad of it. 
the things that hurt you, the things that scarred you, the things that put pain in your life, the idols that, that have, have, have built themselves up, the things that you look at and compare where you're going compared to where you've been. Listen, we talked about that passage of scripture, amen, where God takes us in Psalms 23 from the green pastures to another place. Many people in the midst of your valley of decision are constantly comparing where you're going to that good old green valley that I used to have. Amen. We're thinking about that good old that good old experience where we had that location, that place, that thing, that situation that felt so much like home. Listen, you cannot go backwards. You can't go back to where you used to be. You can only go forward. But before you go there, you've got to let go of what used to be in your life in order to you must overcome in order to come over. You must overcome in order to come over. There are things from your past that you truly have to overcome before you can truly come over to where you're supposed to be going. Forgetting those things that are behind. That doesn't mean just forgetting about it, erasing it. It means dealing with those things that are behind. In some occasions, it means letting go of those things that are behind. In some situations, it means you need to address some things that you've never addressed that are still behind. As long as they've got a hold on you, you can never go where you need to go. Amen. Are y'all still with me today? The Bible shows us comparisons of those who struggle to let go and how it impacted them in going forward. We shared the story, I believe, last week or the week before about life, Lot's wife. Lot's wife couldn't let go. She couldn't let go of the security that she found in living in the city because she knew what it was like to live in the wilderness. She had that experience. It was in her past. Bad times, bad days. But living in the wilderness was equivalent to living by faith, by trusting in God. I don't necessarily know what everything's coming from, but I'm trusting that God is going to supply each and every day everything that I need. That's living in the wilderness. Living in the city is everything's all around me. Everything is comfortable. I know which direction to go. I know how to pull this off the shelf. I've got this in my home. I've got this in my bank account. This works. This runs. And God was calling her from the security of living in the city to stepping out. There were a whole lot of bad things in the city. But the security that she received in the city was more important to her than all those other things. Sometimes we're willing to let a whole, we forget about a whole bunch of stuff and hang on to one thing. We forget about how bad it really was back then. Oh, I wish I could go back then. What? Don't you remember what it was really like? Because we have those fond moments of memory in our life. Oh, I just remember it was so good. It was so pleasant. But you forgot all the other stuff and mess that you went out of. it. You forgot the reason you left the past in the first place. You know, there was a reason why, right? Amen. Lot's wife, she couldn't let go. And so she turned and she turned into a pillar of salt. Jacob story of Jacob and Esau. Jacob had to reconcile with his brother because Jacob and Esau had been in battle all their lives from being birth, birthed all the way through. Jacob had conned Esau into selling him his birthright and then he conned his father into giving him that birthright and then he had to go on the run for threat of his life because while Jacob received the blessing of, of, of inheritance and prosperity, his brother received the blessing of warfare and power. And, and, and soldiers. And Jacob was afraid to go back to where he'd come from because he had to face the things that he had dealt with before he left. Jacob was afraid, but he ultimately had to deal with it so that he could go forward. He had to face him ultimately to go forward. Sometimes we're afraid of selfish decisions that we made in the past. Waiting things that we did and situations that we left behind and we ran away from because we, you know, we, we messed it up and we got away from it. But guess what? It's still there. And sooner or later, you have to deal with the things of the past before you can go forward. The Jews had trouble coming out of Egypt, going through the wilderness to God. The trouble, they had troubles in the wilderness, but the biggest trouble was the trouble was up here because they had trouble letting go of Egypt. At least in Egypt, we had this. At least in Egypt, we weren't threatened like this. 
They remembered the fond, fondest times of being slaves. How do you remember the fondest memories of being a slave? Oh, I remember the good old days of slavery. Back in the day when we'd had no choice and we were beaten and killed and down in the pits. Oh, if we could only go back to those good old days. Are y'all with me? They had trouble of letting go of what was in their past when what was ahead of them was so much better. But every little situation that happened encouraged and inspired them. Oh, we need to go back. We need to go back. We need to go back. You cannot go forward until you first deal with what's in your past. Listen, don't let the past define you. Don't let the things that have been in you. There's so much more that God has for you. But you've got to be ready and willing to go forward. But before you go forward, you've got to deal with that past. Don't let it define you. Don't let it lock you in. Don't let it bondage you up to what you used to be. You're more than that. There's more ahead for you. The potential that's ahead of you is greater than anything you experienced in the past. But first, you've got to let it go.